I know a man, Jack, who told me months ago that his daughter Jessica, in her mid-twenties, had become increasingly withdrawn and depressed for the past several years. After asking a number of questions, I strongly suspected that she'd been withdrawing and cutting for many years before that. And turns out that that was true. He said, I just don't know what to do. No matter what I say, it seemed like I can only make it worse with her. Also very likely true because I knew that he was usually a stern and judgmental man who controlled the people around him, all the people around him, at work, at home, with guilt, obligation, and anger. Mm, pretty normal stuff. We don't see it, but it's still normal. I suggested that he might consider watching the parenting training to give him some ideas about his daughter. But he did what nearly all parents do. Yeah, you know, that sounds like a good idea, which means I'm never going to do that. <laughs> Even though he's got a daughter who's near suicide. But still, that wasn't enough to motivate him because he'd have to change. During our conversation, he even said that he hoped that someone would be able to reach his children. Imagine, he won't take a parenting course, but he hopes somebody else will. Because, quote, they just don't listen to their parents. Meaning him. Little wonder there. He'd already given up. He'd given up on his kids. He had no interest in learning and hoped for some outside miracle to help Jessica and his other children, who, of course, were having prom problems similar to those of their sister. Recently, somebody sent me a memorial written for a young woman who had killed herself. And it took me a second to realize that the person who killed herself was Jack's daughter, the man I had talked to. And he had written the memorial piece. He said, quote, Our beloved Jessica has left this earth after many years of illness. End quote. He could not bring himself to say that for many years it wasn't just illness, it was mental illness, and that she had killed herself. She didn't just leave the earth. He continued, quote, She was 27 years old. Jessica was loving toward everyone in her family and to all of her friends. She played the piano, sang in church, and painted the most beautiful landscapes, which she gave away to others. Her faith in God was strong and never wavered. End quote. There's no criticism or mockery in what I'm reading here. I'm describing what parents do all over the world as, as they justify their denial. This is impossible, this description he's giving. It's impossible for her to have been all those things and then killed herself. It's not, it can't happen. Jack never saw the pain that radiated from his daughter, nor would he consider that he might have caused much of it or could even do something about it. He preferred to see her as he wanted, which is a strikingly human trait. And that vigorous refusal to see the truth prevented him from helping her. Did he contribute to her death? Oh, yes, very much contributed to her death, caused the original pain, ignored it when it came up. Am I blaming him? No, he was doing the best he knew how, which should tell the rest of us something. We're doing the best we know how, but we need to learn to do better. He wasn't willing to do that. Having hope for our children is always good, but believing in what is not true never helps anyone. Being positive, if it's a lie, is just as damaging as being negative. It's denial. He continued, quote, she often talked about being a mother, and I know she would have raised loving and beautiful children. She had great dreams of contributing to the world, and she brought smiles to the faces of people everywhere she went. End quote. Impossible. The truth is she was suicidally depressed most of her life, so no, she didn't bring the smiles, smiles to people's faces, unless, of course, she baked them a cake, and you can bring a smile to anybody's face with chocolate cake. She was depressed. She caused people concern and worry, but Jack did not want to see that. And I get it. Who does? Who, who wants to hear that there's a leak in the pipes in their house? Nobody. But the solution isn't to go, 
Maybe that's background music. <laughs> no, it's leaking water. During her life, when he was asked how his family was doing, he uniformly said, they're all doing great. And he put an emphasis on that word. Denial is death because then we can't address problems that proliferate like cancer cells until nothing can be done. That's what he did. So most of us do. He's not unique. I'm not mocking him. I'm sort of mocking all of us about how deep we get in denial. He concluded, quote, my life in his memorial, my life is better because Jessica was in it, end quote. But he never even saw her. And his self imposed imposed blindness was not pierced by any degree of her pain. She couldn't get through to him. Nothing can. I couldn't. She died because of his blindness. It's that blunt. And he remained blind despite her death. So sometimes people will say, well, maybe something needs to happen to wake me up. No, things don't wake people up. They don't. You see a disaster, hurricanes, death, disease, destruction, and some people wake up and the vast majority become more hardened and bitter. It may sound singularly tragic to some people, this story of Jack and his daughter, but it's actually fairly normal. Normal as in the norm, not normal as in okay. We've come to equate those two. Oh, everything's normal. Like everything's okay. Norm is a mathematical term. Norm, the, the mean. It's fairly normal in families. We have children who are whining, angry, defiant, addicted to phones and video games, confused, lost, and alone. Is that terrible enough? That's all she was. They demonstrate their pain in hundreds of ways. And because we simply have no idea how to help them, we really don't know. We're not pretending. We refuse to see the symptoms. That's something we can change. We can finally acknowledge there's a problem here. That's not music. That's a leaking pipe. So when we ignore it, these children grow up to be miserable adults. Absolutely guaranteed. I submit that a long life of pain is far worse than a life of pain like Jessica's that is cut short. Suicide is a relief for many people not advocating suicide. We cannot afford to comfort ourselves with denial and blindness. The price is just too high. We have to look at them, not as we want them to be. We have to look at them as they are, see them, which we don't, and recognize their obvious demonstrations of pain. We have to diligently look not wait to be hit by a truck. We have to diligent, like suicide, we have to look for how often we are unloving and how we contribute to their pain. We, that's our responsibility. Only with that kind of courageous honesty can we do anything for them. Only then can we say that we truly love them. <laughs>